Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome to today's video where we're going to actually dive in to the Lawrenceville, Georgia real estate market and do a Lawrenceville, Georgia real estate tour in today's video. So if that is what you're looking for, stay tuned and let's get into the video. All right, guys, so welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time on the channel, allow me to introduce myself. My name is Raymond, and I am a real estate broker here in Atlanta, and I help people just like you move to the Atlanta, Georgia area and the surrounding uh, suburbs. Um, and, and I also work with uh, clients that are already here in Atlanta, purchase real estate, as well as sell their current real estate and purchase new real estate. So any real estate concerns for the Atlanta metropolitan area, including uh, in, in addition to Savannah, Augusta, Macon, Columbus, I am your guy. All of my contact information will be in the description below. So definitely use me as a resource for that. Also, if you are a subscriber, welcome back to the channel. And thank you so much for your continued support. Uh, so in today's video, we're going to take a look at the Lawrenceville, Georgia real estate market as a whole. I'm doing something a little bit different in today's video. I'm actually going to do the real estate tour from this thing, the computer. Yeah, so I think that will give you a better view of how many properties are actually on the market in Lawrenceville, how they stack up against each other, um, where they're located. Uh, and I'm also going to give you some very good, helpful information along the way. We're going to be talking about the 90 day seasoning rule for FHA and why you may be an FHA buyer and you can't buy a property. We're going to also be talking about, um, you know, one owner owning 85% of all of the real estate in Lawrenceville. Definitely, that's crazy. Um, <laughs> so we got so much to unpack in this video. So definitely watch it all the way through. I would definitely tell you it's going to be very insightful, very impactful. If Lawrenceville, Georgia, or this area of Gwinnett County is where you want to be, you definitely want to watch this video to the end. So until then, uh, let's, well, so yeah, let's jump in the computer and let's make it happen. Let's go. All right, guys, welcome to the computer. Let's go ahead and jump into the Lawrenceville, Georgia real estate tour. Um, I've already broken the price points down. Uh, so the first screen is going to be between um, zero and 150. And then we're going to go 250 to 350, then 350 to 450, and then 450 to 550. Or it may be 450 beyond because I don't know if there's any 550. So I just, I, I've already kind of did some research and um, got the screens uh, loaded up, but I just don't remember that one but anyway this is going to be my new format for my real estate tours versus actually going out to the properties on every single video uh i think this is going to give you guys a little bit more comprehensive view of the total market at the time of me recording my real estate tour versus just me picking out like three or four homes this gives you a better uh understanding as to what is on the market right inside of the mls so this definitely will help you so this is that zero to 250 price point um, and this is what you got. This is it. So we have this town home here, which, um, let's see, uh, you know, it's listed at 199, 900. I won't scroll a whole lot on the screen because there are private information as far as private remarks here. Uh, so I will keep it just kind of right in here. Um, just FYI. Um, but essentially what 199 is the list price listed January 18th. So it's been on the market 57 days. So likely this property has a tenant in place, uh, more or less. So yeah, like I said, this property will definitely have a tenant in place because it's been on the market 57 days. I just looked at the private remarks as well, and it does have a tenant in place. So typically when you see properties that have been on the market for a long time, it will be indicative to a property that either there's an issue with the property for sure, or there's a tenant involved. And so the sale is just not going well because of that tenant that's in place. Um, so just FYI, most tenants that are involved, obviously it's an interruption of their tenancy. Uh, they have to leave, they have to move. And sometimes they're not as cooperative, uh, with the sellers to, you know, participate in that process of letting people in and going through the due diligence and appraisals and all of that stuff. It does require an input, uh, from the tenant's perspective and not all tenants will agree, uh, to do it. And so sometimes you'll see that those properties will stay on the market for a long time. But this is 1,584 square feet, bringing the cost per square feet to $126. Um, I mean, if this wasn't a tenant involved, I mean, for $199,900, if you are an investor, great. Like, if you are an investor, then you can buy this property with the tenant in place uh, and then re, uh, you know, get the tenant out and uh, release it to someone else if you want to, if that tenant is not the type of wow 
Wow, I've never seen this before. This is, I've never seen this done before in my life. This must be like a two bedroom or something and they, they needed three bedrooms. But this is mad weird. I've never seen that done. Wow, that's crazy. They are, this is the closet and they have this bed coming out of the closet to give more space in the room versus just doing two twin beds. Wow, talking about creative. My God. <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna click into every house on the market, but this I this one I just wanted to click on because it was in that 250 price point. Um, but again, this is a tenant involved, so there you go. And this is the same community as well. Um, 57 days on the market. Is that the same house? Let's see. Oh no, it's a different property. Interesting. What's going on over here? Why aren't they selling? I'm going to scroll down again and see if uh, this is a tenant occupied. Be right back. All right. So this one is likely owned by the same owner and uh, of the other listing and it is still occupied as well. So that's a reason for that one too. They may have listed at the same time on the same day. Uh, just FYI. So realistically on the market right now, if your budget is 250, um, you know, uh, then you, you don't have any options in Marsville. Okay. So as we step up to 250 to 350, you have more options uh, in Lawrenceville. So uh, under the under the up to 250, we only had three properties that were on the, that's on the market currently. When we jump up to 250 to 350, we have 43 properties on the market, which is considerably more. Um, and so this is just to kind of give you an exterior view of kind of how things change uh, so we have it defaulted to show the highest price uh, at the top and then the lowest price down um, but this is kind of you know the look that you can expect just to give you an exterior view of all of the houses that are on the market in that price point so you can see the the lower the price we got older home here then we got smaller footprints you got even a townhouse here um, one of the things that's unique about Lawrenceville, like this is this is a very unique situation. Like it's 1,408 square feet, uh, $197 per square foot, listed at 277,900. Uh, it is a um, there's nothing in here that don't need to be seen. Um, it is a three bedroom, two bath um, property. Uh, they do have deadline for submissions was on um, 320. So March 20th is going to be their deadline on their offers. Let's see what it looked like. But the reason I say it's unique is because of the amount of land. Typically, this uh, Lawrenceville is similar to one of the areas that I've talked about before on, on the channel, Smyrna, where the homes are very close to each other. Uh, so definitely go check out the Smyrna blog. Um, let's plug that. But uh, with this with this particular uh, house, you have a lot of acreage because the house is actually older. So the newer the homes get in Lawrenceville, the smaller the lot size is. The older the home, the bigger the lot size. Okay, just FYI, just general rule of thumb when it comes to Lawrenceville. So that's why I said that it, this one is kind of sort of unique. All right, so that one was two seventy seven nine. Um, let's jump up and just let's see what catches my eye as far as something that looks to be really, really moving ready and a decent picture. So this is 317. This is 1,452 square feet, uh, $218 per square foot. foot. Um, this is at 317,000. Let's see what you can expect for 317. All right, so this one is virtually staged. This is gonna be uh, an investment property. It's gonna be purchased looks like it was purchased by I know the pictures right off the top of my head when I see the pictures I know who the sellers are <laughs> uh, in most cases um, this is gonna be an open door property uh, meaning that they purchased this property probably a few months ago no more than probably three months ago or four months ago just depending on how long it's been on the market it actually hasn't been on the market at all so likely they purchased this property at the beginning of the year for considerably less than what the list price is now 
Um, and what they do, the reason they are able to do that is because most of the time they're dealing directly with the buyer. So it's going to be uh, Open Door is going to be the company, if you will, that the type of companies that call your phone and like, hey, do you want to sell your home? And you're like, yeah, I'll sell it. And then they offer you a price um, that is below market value. And the reason they offer it to you below market value is so they can turn around and put it on the market for profit. All right. So th that is um, why that's also why for my for my seller clients, I'm like, dude, don't put your house, don't sell your house just to direct to an investor. You need to allow that market to show you exactly what the highest price attainable for your property. Uh, because if not, you're going to give it away. And then in a few months, you, you're going to see somebody make 60 and 50, 50, 60, 70 thousand dollars more than what you make. Right. So that's the the drawback. But for most sellers that accept those offers, it's like, hey, they owe probably significantly less. And to them, they're walking away with a good check. So a good check is a good check for to some people. Uh, but for me, as your agent, I want to make sure you get the best good check possible. All right. So, I mean, this is a decent um, starter home, um, if you will. Um, you know, it is moving ready. This is 317. This is what you're looking at in uh, Lawrenceville in that price point of uh, 317. All right. Um, so Lawrenceville home has one story. Uh, it's a three bedroom, two bath. Um, it, is, it is with open door. This is one thing to show out. So a lot of the buyers, um, if you are a buyer in the market right now, uh, if you have an FHA loan, this is one of the things that you're going to be up against, which is the FHA eligibility um, is 90 days. So likely this property was purchased probably February 16th, um, likely, because their their eligibility is May 16th. So 90 day seasoning rule from the federal government requires that they will not the federal government will not insure meaning the fha loan which is a, a loan that is insured by the federal uh, housing administration they will not insure that property that was recently purchased um uh within the last 90 days so the intent behind that rule was to uh, sway away from investors being able to like, take all of the homes and put them on the market. That sounds good. Right right, so what did that rule actually do? Nothing. <laughs> it did nothing. It's actually counterproductive. The FHA seasoning rule is absolutely stopping the majority of buyers from being able to buy homes in 2022. So it was one of those laws and rules that have come back to literally bite every FHA buyer in the rear end, 100%, because there's no way around it. That is the law of the land. You have to wait 90 days seasoning from the time of purchase uh, before the FHA will ensure financing on that particular home so if you have a hundred houses and out of the hundred houses 80 of them are investor owned that were just recently purchased in 90 days then that means for an fha buyer they only have 20 homes to search from so that is that is one of the issues when you when you start thinking about well thinking about well why can't a lot of uh, fha buyers receive uh you know buy homes this is why and this is why you want to stay away from fha this is why you want to go conventional this is why you need to keep your credit score or enter you get your credit score to at least at 620 before you go and start shopping for a home because a conventional loan will have no problems there is no 90 day seasoning period for a conventional loan there you go putting you up on game right there you go but so this particular house if you're an fha buyer you couldn't even look at it until may 16th likely it's not going to be around come may 16th very very likely all oh, right, so that's 317. Let's go up to a little bit higher in the mid 300s. Let's take a look at this one here. This one looks nice. Uh, this is a brand new listing, and it's also open door. I could tell by the picture right here <laughs> because I do this for a living. This is what I do. I can look at a photograph and tell you who the what we you know who the owner of the property is, who the seller is. But this little sticker here that is the open door. They put that on the door to let people know, hey, you can enter the property. Blah blah blah. Okay. So let's take a look at this town home. It's 1,776 square feet. It's likely a three, two, or maybe a four, two. 
and a half. But let's take a look at the photographs and then we'll look at the stats. This is nice. Nice and moving ready. I mean, depending on who you are, if you don't have a lot of children, if you're if you're single, preferably, um, this would be very, very spacious for you. But even if you had, hold up. Did they put an exterior door? They painted the door black? Or is that an exterior door? That looks like an exterior door. But it can't be an exterior door. Who would put an exterior door in the interior room? Wow. That's crazy. That's ridiculously crazy. Okay, so all of the doors are painted black. That's not an exterior door. I think the, all of the ex, all of the interior doors on the outside are black. That's the look that they wanted, I guess. That's, I mean, that's not too bad. I mean, it's dirty. But this is what Open Door does. They buy these homes. They do very little work. Um, <laughs> sometimes they don't even clean them. And they put it on the market for thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars more. It is rough. It's crazy. But that's why you have to know. You have to have an agent like me that know all of these things and that can 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 give you the playbook on how to be successful, right? All right. So this one is a three bedroom, two and a half bath, seventeen hundred and seventy six square feet on the market for three hundred thirty thousand, one hundred eighty six dollars per square foot, built in two thousand and five. All right. So. That's that one. We're gonna go ahead and move to a different price point, just for just to show you, just to show you kind of what they purchased it for. They purchased it in February 18th for $276,100. March 10th, they have it on the market for $330,000. You do the math. Before, after. That's the market. That's the market. So that's why you see me taking you to new construction communities, right? That's why you see me taking you into these new construction communities because you can somewhat avoid this. Now, new construction communities, just depending on how soon you need to be in, may not be an option. Uh, and you have to compete with this. Now, here's the caveat to that property. Although it was sold for 276 and now it's listed for 330, likely there is a comparable to support 330. And the reason there is a comparable to support 330 is because the seller that owned the home before, the owner, the previous owner, sold directly to the buyer, open door. They sold directly. So it was an off-market, likely, very likely, an off-market listing, okay? And when there's an off-market listing and I'm able to get it for 80, well, I'm, I'm able to get it for 80% loan, meaning loan to value or, or purchase to value or, or my purchase price 80% to value, meaning I still have 20% equity in my in, in the house even after I purchase it. Because I'm dealing with cash, because I'm going straight to the seller, I can offer them 20% less. Uh, and they feel like they're getting, which they are in some cases, they're getting a good chunk of money because uh, the rate of the, the amount of appreciation is just so vast that even with 80%, they can walk away with a good check. And that leaves 20% equity in the home. And so basically when open door closes, they just put it right back on the market and tap that 20% in, 20% profit. There you go. It may not always be 20%. It could be different percentages, but I just use 20% for different, uh, simple math. Um, so that's how it works right now. All right. So that's the uh, 250 to 350 price point. Let's go ahead and move on over to the um, 350 to 450 price point. In this price point, you see that our, our property count increases from 44 or 43. It increases from 43 to 72. Uh, it increases to 72. And the reason it increases to 72 is because this kind of gives you the better range of lower uh, Lawrenceville. Uh, this is kind of the sweet spot for Lawrenceville, 350 to 450. You're going to have more homes to choose from. You're going to have, um, yeah, more homes to choose from because that is the going rate kind of the area. As I told you in my previous video about Lawrenceville, definitely go check it out. Put the, put the link here, which is going to be the Lawrenceville uh, pros and cons. In that pros and cons, I gave you the medium uh, home listing price. Uh, and that number was 366. So it, it it shows you that if you're in, within your budget of 352 and 450, you're gonna have a more opportunities for homes. You're gonna have a vast opportunity for homes because that is the going rate. So let's just give you a, a scrolling tour, <laughs> a scrolling tour, a scrolling tour. Okay. 
Okay. So, I mean, all of these are really, really nice homes. You're probably done and be like, oh, those are nice. Those are nice. Those are nice. But it took us to get up to 350 to 450 to get to that. Oh, everything is oh, that's nice. That's nice. That's nice, right? You really don't see a bad looking house anywhere on the thing. I mean, now we're down at the 352. These could be considered bad looking, just depending on what your preference is. If you wanted something newer. Uh, but let's just look at this 352 and then we'll go up higher. We'll go to um, in the 360s, 370s, 380s. Well, three, probably go to 370s. So this is another open door property. We're not gonna do a whole well, what they bought it for thing, but just likely know that it, they purchased it for considerably less. <laughs> All right. But again, your job, my job as your agent is to find the comparables, right? To see what the true value is. It's not about what they paid for it two months ago. It's about what it's worth today. Huge porch. Nice, nice, nice. I mean, this is 1,721 square feet. Likely it's probably a 3-2 or a 3-2 and a half. Since this is a ranch, it's probably a 3-2. All right. Three two, yeah. Um, not FHA eligible until April twenty eighth, twenty twenty two. But uh, the square footage, uh, cost per square foot is two hundred five dollars. This is at three hundred and fifty two thousand with a square footage of seventeen hundred and twenty one square feet. All right, let's go ahead and uh, pop into another home that's considerably pricier. We'll jump up into the three seventy five. Let's take a look at this three seventy five here. Um, uh, this one is 2,600 square feet. It's only been on the market for two days. What in the world? Okay, maybe some of their furniture broke. Man, I don't get it. I, For the life of me, I don't understand how an agent can be this freaking lazy. Like, this is how you take your pictures, man? Are you serious? Is this like a foreclosure or something? This, this may have been an eviction. Honestly, looking at this, this is probably an eviction. This is definitely probably an eviction that that they were so robust, they were so eager to get it on the market that these are the pictures that they use. This is just, I wish every seller just called me to list your home. Like this is, ah, oh, this is hard to swallow. My God. All right, so you got to be able to see through the madness. It looks like, I mean, it's built in 2016, 2,600 square feet. Looks like it probably hasn't been maintained too horribly beyond its cleanliness. Uh, but let's, let me scroll down. I'm going to check and see if there's any issues in the property marks that you can't see. All right, so let's go ahead and scroll down. There's nothing in here you can't see. So it is a, uh, we're working to beat a foreclosure against this property. The location matters to you. So this is a pre-foreclosure. Um... And you're going to start seeing some foreclosures coming, guys. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. Um, Private Mark says there's a court appointed personal representative to negotiate and sign contracts. Interesting. Um, four bedrooms, three baths um, on this one. So, you know, they're touting the, the location uh, on this one. But, you know, again, we'll we'll look at kind of where it's located. Let's look at where it's located right here. Let's see that. Because I should have been doing that before. All right, so all right, so it's near Sugarloaf. Okay, so right outside of Decula, um, we're gonna be doing some uh, some videos in Decula as well to show you what Decula is. But this is downtown here, um, so it's not it's not too far. You got some shopping right here, um, and you got your Walmart for your shopping there. So it's all within few miles of driving and then you got your hospital here so yeah it's not not too bad of a um not too bad of a location honestly it's a little ways off the interstate uh if you have to commute to the interstate um from here so let's see let's choose the interstate so if i had to get on the interstate that's gotta be well it's kind of taking me around but let me let me change this I want to get on the interstate. To the interstate. Why is it taking me a loop around? <laughs> Hold on. Let's do this. It's like taking me. All right. So pretty much roughly, it's about 13.2 miles from the interstate. 
So it's about 20 minutes from the interstate, which depending on how your, your life is structured, that could be time consuming, 20 minutes to get to the highway. The part of Lawrenceville that is really nice and convenient is kind of this part here, which is kind of east, uh, west of Lawrenceville downtown. Um, you're going to be closer to the interstate. This is that school we talked about in my previous vlog with the, the, the number one um, uh, high school, public high school in the state of Georgia. That one's located right over here. But again, that is not a feeder school, meaning that uh, just because you live in the area, your child is going to go there. It's a lottery school, which means that it, it accepts uh, district-wide students uh, on a lottery system. Okay. All right, so that's the location of that one. Um, let's go ahead and move on to another property to show you. I actually like doing this, guys. Drop in the comments if you like the real estate tour this way so I can actually go a little bit more deeper and show you kind of more pictures, give you more substance. If you like this way of doing it, um, let me know. Drop a comment below, let me know. Uh, and if you don't like it this way, let me know that too so that way I know that, hey, you know, pref uh, preference... Uh, they uh, uh, their, their preference is that I go and walk down the street and show you the street. So it just depends. Let me know. I'm always uh, willing to evolve on this channel to make sure that it is serving the people that I'm doing it for, which is my audience, my subscribers, my viewers. So definitely I want to make sure you guys are happy with what you see. All right, let's go ahead and jump up to this. Uh, let's see what catches my eye. I, this was actually catching my eye really, really um, intently. I really want to see this. Uh, hopefully you do too. So it's 2,400 square feet. Cost per square foot is $161, which is fairly, fairly low compared to what we've seen. Uh, $388,000 is the list price. Okay. So the kitchen needs to be updated. Open this bigger so you can make sure you guys can see that. Got some natural hardwood floors. Got some charm. Got some shutter blinds, which is kind of cool. You can actually close that all the way. I like those blinds. As you can see, the kitchen is going to need some uh, renovation. Nice big, big windows. I mean, they got a lot of dark wood trims, which is very dated. But you paint that, it'll be right back to just normal. Um, <laughs> like it'll look. Uh, just painting the trims will bring the property up twenty years, probably. All right. So this does have a basement with a drop-in ceiling. Hmm. I mean, okay. I mean, not too bad. Let me check and see what's down here. All right. So there's nothing down here that you can't see. So it's a five bedroom, three and a half bath, built in 1987, uh, 2,400 square feet. Um, it is vacant. Does require appointments, and this is also open door as well. So just going back to that 90 day seasoning, you can see how that rule is impacting so many people. Um. Every house, almost every house that we've clicked on, with the exception of one, has been owned by the same company. Let that sink in. Just let that sink in for a while. All right, so let's take a look um, a little bit higher up the totem pole. Let's see what else. So that was 388. And let me just show you where that one was located too, just to, since I did that on the last house, just to kind of show you where it is. I think I'm going to do that as well for each house we look at moving forward. And we're going to look at the next section and we're going to put a wrap on this video. And then we're going to have more content coming out about kind of like where the shopping is located, uh, all of that stuff, and just kind of like just living in Lawrenceville on a map view. Um, we're going to do that as well. All right. So this one is going to be, okay, so this one is actually closer to Snellville. So this is more South Lawrenceville. Um, it's way down there. So it's more so South, uh, South uh, West Lawrenceville. Um, let me get my little pen. So Lawrenceville is here. Snellville is here, which is the next town over, which is actually smaller than Lawrenceville. Snellville is actually going to be much smaller than Lawrenceville. Um, you're going to have more. You're going to have more stuff near Lawrenceville than you will Snellville. You know, just stuff that's right off the map, right? So going in this direction. You have more shopping and stuff. Uh, this this is going to be more rural. Everything in this section here, down, <laughs> going crazy with that. Rural, right? Going in that direction. Okay, so anything south is going to be your rural section. Okay, until you get back into this direction, which is kind of the uh, suburbs of, uh, you know, and more in, in inner suburbs. 
uh, to Atlanta. All right, so that's where that one is. Let's go ahead and move on to the next property. So let's just pick one at the top of the list that looks the best. Um, so that one was, what was the price on that? Why am I keep, why keep going to the different price point? Giving you guys previews. So that one was a 388. Um, let's see. It looks appealing. That looks different, like bigger or something. I like this one. Let's see what this one looks like. This one is a brand new listing. So it's got your two-car garage with your bonus dormers up top. This is probably like a bonus area over the garage. Um, built in 1994. Look who it's owned by, guys. Boom. Open door. 2,790 square feet on this one. And it's listed at 395. Kitchen is dated. Wallpaper. Nice fenced in backyard though. Grass looks awesome. My goodness. I wonder when did they take these pictures? It looks like the pictures are, I wonder how long have they owned this house? Because that grass is like super green up front. Maybe that's Photoshop. Because right now it's, it's, it's winter. Whoa. Is it spring yet? It's 316. So I think spring is actually the 22nd of March. But we still have a few cold snaps that just actually uh, left out of Atlanta the last weekend. So I wonder how they get this grass or rain. They probably painted it on like a Photoshop, honestly. <laughs> uh, or maybe not. I don't know. I haven't been there. But that's 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 very green for this time of the year. Um, and this is a three bedroom, three and a half bath. Okay. So now let's look and see if we find. I actually like this one. This is 400. Been on the market for 29 days. Let's take a look and see what's not here. Open doors, well, not eligible for FHA until April 25th. I mean, this is like open door bought everything in Lawrenceville. And the, the the issue is, one of the issues too is that you're not seeing sellers actually sell their homes to the public. They're selling their homes to investors direct. And I don't know why they are doing that. I don't know why. Um, because anyone, any seller that I have an opportunity to talk with, I guarantee you, I could have sold your house to sold your house for four hundred before you sold it to them. So like, why sell it to them for them to sell it for four hundred when you could have been the one to sell it for four hundred, right? Yeah. All right. Let's take a look at this one. Then we'll move on to the big price point, and then we'll put a wrap on this video. Still dated. I mean, you guys still got some improvements as far as to bring it up to date. Um, anyone who's had a consultation with me, uh, they, you know, my assessment, my seven step assessment questionnaire that I send you for every house that we negotiate while you are away and you're in your search for home. Um, I'm going to tell you like, Hey, this is this whole, this whole kitchen is outdated. So your backsplash is outdated. Your cabinets are outdated. Your hardware is outdated. Your flooring is outdated. So that's something that, um, you take, I, I take into account. Also, this is outdated. These spindles right here that are um this spindles that's outdated the wood outdated you know raw iron is in now um, um and the white the white wood versus the actual natural wood that's outdated okay so that those are the type of things that you get when you work with me and you in your relocation um because you're not here most of my clients are not here when they are actually um looking for their properties to purchase um and so this is this is you know we actually do like this this the way that i'm doing this screen recording it's kind of the way uh me and my clients ease into their search um of like going page by page picture by picture house by house to really understand um what what, what they want and what they need and then i get to work in negotiations my job is what you the strength you get from me is in the negotiations how to structure that deal how to beat out the competitors what games to play what levers to pull that's what i do right All right, so these pictures are, you know, this is this is the house. Yeah, this one, this one is very outdated. Needs some improvements, but I mean, structurally, do do you have a good structure? Do you have good bones? You know, that's what's important. I mean, it was written in 1995, and it, it looks very much similar to 1995. 
It's five bedroom, two and a half baths, though, right? Two full baths and two half baths, actually. Um, and a big lot. Super big lot. So that's actually definitely good. Let's see where it's located, and then we'll go ahead and move on to the next price point. Okay, so this one is going to be on the other side of Grayson. Um, actually, this is Loganville. I don't know why this is in my search. Did they list the property wrong? Okay, I don't know why I saw Loganville just a minute ago. Maybe I'm tripping. Okay, maybe I'm tripping. Or maybe the computer's tripping. Okay, so I saw Loganville there. So, all right, so this is this is where it's located. It's definitely southeast uh, of downtown uh, Lawrenceville. It's kind of in between Grayson and Windsor. Um, so, yeah. Again, I think the sweet spot of Lawrenceville is right in here. This is the sweet side of Lawrenceville. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and move over to the next house. The next house. All right, let's just look at the most expensive one in this price point. Or let's see, this is four fifty. This is four fifty. Let's look at this one. This is Turtle Creek Lake. Um, this is 2,708 square feet. Um, okay, nothing you can't really see. Everything's good here. Four bedrooms, three and a half baths. Uh, 450 list price. Uh, $166 on cost per square foot. Nice brick front exterior. This is nice. This is really nice. Got your formal living, I mean formal dining. Your kitchen in the center. You got your breakfast area behind it. You got your formal living. This is the master. The master bath. That, I mean it's still outdated a little bit. I mean, it, it can it could use some improvements with the with the fixtures. The lighting fixtures are very dated. Uh, ooh, that fence needs to be replaced too. But bam, there you go. You guys actually got to see uh, the street. Uh, I would have showed you the houses on the street too. I was there. Um, so Turtle Creek Club, residents and guests, so it does have a clubhouse and a uh, pool area. So that's nice. The HOA fees in this property is $700 a year, which is definitely not bad for in ground for a pool and tennis court. So there you go. That's your 450. Let's take a look at where that one is located. Uh oh, oh, I'm way up. Okay, so this is gonna be North uh, North Lawrenceville, which I think is a pretty pretty decent area right in here. So that's where it's located. So you're actually closer to the interstate here, which is definitely you know more beneficial in my opinion. Um, living in just living in Georgia. Living in Atlanta Metro, um, I would take being, I would take being near the interstate any day. Um, so ten minutes from the interstate, so super cool, super cool. Well, that's actually to the Chipotle, <laughs> but the Chipotle is right by the interstate. Uh, I just, I just choose the nearest thing by the interstate. It makes sense, right? Uh, Four point three miles exactly. Okay, dokie. All right, so now let's go ahead and take a look at our uh, 450 to 500 price point. Uh, 451 or 450,000 to 550 uh, gives you three, uh, 20 properties. Um, so you do get, you know, you still get a, quite a few properties um, in that price point. So I'll go ahead and give you a quick scroll and then we'll just choose, I'll choose one of them to show you on in this price point at the 550 number. But as you can see, I mean, you still got opportunities here. Like this is a nice looking house from next year. This is a nice looking house. This house, you actually get uh, the this, this side entry garage uh, with 3,734 square feet. Looks like we had to take a look at this one. This is a lot of square footage. You know what I mean? Bringing your cost per square foot to $127. Let's take a look inside. 
All right, so your backyard is kind of small, but you do have one. And you're coming into the house. A lot of angles. Nice kitchen. It's dated. The whole house is dated. There are some improvements. So there's the glass enclosure. It's an improvement. Still got some wallpaper though. Ooh, look at that wallpaper. <laughs> Are you into wallpaper? Drop a comment below. Let me know what you think. <laughs> uh, so you have a basement on this one. That's where you got that square footage. Is that some of that square footage from? Nice big room. Nice big room. Okay, you got an unfinished, partial unfinished basement. You do have a clubhouse with a pool and a tennis court. So you do have some amenities. And it's a decent backyard when you look at it from that perspective. I mean, it needs to work on the grass, but got a deck and you could put in a pool if you wanted to or do some stuff back there. So that's kind of cool for 475. Let's take a look and see where that one is located. Okay. So you see? You're gonna be north, North Lawrenceville. So most of your high value stuff is gonna be north of the, of the city. Uh, but this one is again a good one, right up, right near the interstate, uh, closer to the mall. You know, so you know that's me personally. I think this is gonna give you more of that uh, urban feel versus the rural. The south, the more south you go into Lawrenceville, over in here you're gonna get that rural feeling, right? But over in here you're gonna keep that urban feel. Okay. Cool. That's that one. And then let's go up. And let's see. Let's pick the most expensive set. This is actually interesting. That's 540. Let's take a look at this 540. This is going to be uh, at Covey Creek. Not a whole lot of information in here. Um, as far as square footage, so I can't determine the price for square footage. I had to go into public records to see the square footage, but let's just take a look at the pictures real quick. Uh, so this is going to be a 2021 bill. So it's a brand new house, effectively. So imagine that. You can buy a brand new house in 2021, put it on the market in 2022, and still make profit. Brand new house. <laughs> um, coming up the stairs. Pictures are horrible, but um, for the most part, this is going to be, you know, your brand new build. Um, there's not a lot of new construction going on in Lawrenceville, actually, uh, for single family homes. Very, very little right now. Uh, I think this is probably one of the last communities that was actually finished uh, there at Kobe Creek. This the price is $540,000 for that. Okay. Um, and I don't even know if the square footage is even in public records yet. Or if they, because sometimes they don't. They just, you know, they just. Some of these folks don't do what they're supposed to do. Even like the tax ID is NA, so yeah, I don't feel like doing that. So don't know the square footage on that one. And that's your 540. Okay. Now, finally, for our 550 plus with no, with no, um, no uh, maximum. It gives you this community here, which is probably which is the only new construction community that's going on right now, which is going to be in New Hope Landing for single family homes. And this is going to put you in the eight hundred and ninety nine thousand nine hundred price point. Let me show you where it is on the map before we get into the pictures, just so you can see where it's located. OK, so this is going to be your more uh, rural area here near uh, Triple Mill Park. So you do have that big park, which is that is a, 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 a plus if you if you like the park and, and, and nature and all that stuff. Uh, so you do have that. So this was a little bit further away from the interstate um, and a, a little bit further south from um, downtown Marshville. OK. All right. So let's take a look at this pictures here. So you do got some outside to cover the space. And these are uh, renderings, uh, stock photos. I don't know exactly where they are. I do have a planned visit to this community. 
uh, to put my feet on the ground and see what the inventory is and see where they are. So if you're interested in seeing more content about these particular homes, drop a comment below and let me know. But again, this is brand new construction. So I mean, it's gonna be, you know, big rooms. I mean, it, I think new construction, they're trying to make the rooms bigger nowadays uh, because before they would, the rooms would just be so tiny back in like 2016, 17. Uh, but now they are really trying to increase those bedroom counts. This is a nice bathroom, nice modern um, vibe. Look at the fixtures here. That's pretty cool. Well, this is nice. Nice living room with the basement going down. Or is that the second level? Hmm, I don't know. It's maybe the second level. Or maybe the first. It's likely the first level. I don't think the second level will be that open, but possibly. Definitely, that's why I gotta go put my feet on the ground. Really nice. Really nice touches. Okay, so that may have been the second level, guys. Because it was just going down. There was no up. So, yeah, that may have been a second level living room. Right on top of where that fireplace is. This is absolutely beautiful, though. I, I, I really like the details that they did. Look at that. Look at that countertop. Wow. The detail. That's crazy. Now, I don't know if you're into that look, but... Just for what it's worth, that is definitely amazing. Got your nice uh, natural built-in bookshelves, and, uh, cubby areas, which is really, really come in handy so much. Uh, you got your shiplap uh, boards in the back. Yeah, this is nice. This is extremely nice. And this is $8.99. This is not even a million dollars. Like, this is really a lot of detail for the price point. I mean, I've seen million dollar homes look more basic than this. So, this is, that's definitely nice. Nice big double doors. And one of the, th one of the things I will always say, too, is that when you look at pictures sometimes, when you go in person, you get a whole different feel. Um, you know, and especially like the height of the doors. One of the things that gets me is like one of my clients just went on a contract with a home that has really tall ceilings. And on the pictures, it looks like a normal ceiling. But when you're in there, like, yes. I mean, I'm 5'8", and and it's like, you know, I would look like a little midget probably standing close to that door the, the, based on the height, probably. Chances are, you know, that the door is going to be, you know, towering over me. Likely the door is, I know the door is taller than me, but, you know. Um, so, so yeah, so definitely I'll get out and take a look at this one. It's, uh, uh, five bedrooms, four to five baths. So I guess it, I mean, four bedrooms to five uh, bedrooms, one could be a great room. So it just depends on, I guess, how it's laid out. Um, so definitely if you want to see more of this community in uh, New Hope Landing, drop a comment below, let me know. Uh, so yeah, that's going to be a wrap on our video today for, um, Lawrenceville Georgia real estate tour. So I've shown you different price points, uh, from all the way down to, uh, zero to, to 250, uh, working our way up, you know, uh, between the price points. Uh, and so you've actually been able to see a lot of different, uh, properties in that price point, uh, the differences in those. And, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and uh, put a wrap on this video. All right, guys. Thank you so much for hanging out with me in today's video, the real estate tour for Lawrenceville, Georgia. Hopefully you found it inf informative. Hopefully you found it excited just to kind of see, uh, get a real view of every house that's on the market for Lawrenceville, Georgia, uh, to date, uh, because literally you pretty much saw everything that was on the market. Let me know what you thought about this new way of doing the real estate tours as well. If you like kind of being on the computer versus only being limited to like three houses or four houses. Uh, let me know in the comments about that. Also, let me know what you thought about that FHA seasoning rule, that 90 day seasoning rule. Uh, chime in about how you felt that that impacts, um, you know, most of the buyers to the date uh, to market in the market right now. Uh, and also drop a comment. Let me know what you thought about that one 
uh, owner owning about 85% of all the houses that we clicked on here in Lawrenceville. What do you think about that? <laughs> Crazy. Also, I want to invite you to subscribe to the channel if you're looking to purchase a home or sell a home in Lawrenceville, Georgia. I definitely want to be a resource to you. All of my contact information is in the description below, as well as the entire Atlanta metropolitan area, in addition to Savannah, Augusta, Macon, and Columbus, Georgia. I can assist you in those markets as well. Uh, so definitely reach out to me if you have any needs to buy real estate or sell real estate. I am your man. I can help you with accomplishing that goal. Also, real big updates for the channel. I am working on on a uh, rental uh, program or rental course that you can purchase and it will walk you through the uh, transition in here to Atlanta on a rental aspect because I can acknowledge that a lot of people that are watching this video may not be ready to buy in Atlanta right now. So what do I have for you guys? I do have that course that's going to be coming out that was, that was going to walk you through exactly what you need to do to transition to relocate here to Atlanta in a rental capacity. Also, I will also have another option to where it can come with a consultation where I can actually work with you kind of one-on-one. -on -one. Well, it will be one-on-one, -on -one, but kind of work you through some different things that you may have some questions about. Uh, so that's coming. And then also I'm going to be starting a Patreon here soon where we'll actually be able to go live. I'll, I'll go live with my Patreon uh, subscribers where we'll talk live and ask uh, Q&A questions every week uh, and also some exclusive content will be over on Patreon too. So drop a comment below. Let me know if you would be interested in joining my Patreon um, and uh, that way I'll know to put pressure to get that done or if I don't have a lot of people comment on it, then I'll, like, oh, I'll get it up when I get it up. But uh, definitely let me know what you think about that because I think being able to do live Q&As is going to be definitely beneficial to those of you that are in your transition right now um, that maybe you just want some you know questions answered um, and, and all that stuff. So definitely big stuff coming, big news for the channel. Thank you so much for being a subscriber here on YouTube. It's absolutely free to hit that subscribe button and turn the notification bell on to get more information about Atlanta, uh, living in Atlanta, uh, and also living in the Atlanta suburb. So thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.